Hey guys, today I'm going to be starting a series of how to develop apps for Android. Um, this will complement my other series and I will still be doing the other tutorials for iPhone and web development as well. I'm just going to be adding Android with that. So to start developing for Android you need three programs. One of which is Eclipse. So right now I'm on Eclipse.org right here and Eclipse is a program it, where you write the code. So, I'm currently on a Mac, but you can use a PC or Mac or even Linux with this. Um, so, go to Eclipse.org and then go to Downloads. And you're going to want to download the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. It's around 188 megabytes. So, you would just click that and click here to download. I already have this, so I'm not going to download it again. But you would click here to download. The next thing you need is the Java JDK and this is the Java development kit and this enables you to work with Java with Eclipse so you would just click here for the JDK and you would just select your platform any of these are supported and you would just click that and hit continue once again I've already downloaded this to save video time and you would just download this and that would install even though you may have Java you still need the JDK this includes all of the Java next you would need the Android SDK so I'm just going to click here and here you'll see your Windows, Mac, and Linux downloads. Um, so you would just click the one that's appropriate for you and then agree to it and hit download. Once again I'm not going to do this just for video time. Okay so once Eclipse downloads you'll want to run it. So Eclipse will get started up and make sure you remember where you save your Android SDK because this will become important once Eclipse starts running. Also on Android developers you can click the home tab or actually you can go back to the SDK tab and you'll see the Eclipse plugin. You'll need this to run Eclipse. This basically just tells Eclipse what to work with and um, goes and gets the SDK for you such as like 2.2, 2.1 that kind of stuff. So I'm using Galileo so I'll just copy this right here and wait till Eclipse opens. Okay, This will be the first screen you ever see it's just telling you, you know, the stuff you can do with Eclipse. So I'm just going to exit out of this because we're wanting Android. I'm just going to resize it, make it bigger. I'm going to click Help, Install New Software, and then I'm going to paste the uh, link Google gave me into this and check mark the box by Developer Tools. I'll zoom in so y'all can see that. Okay, and then I'll hit Next. And it'll calculate and bring this this stuff back. So I'll click yes. I agree to everything and finish. And now it's going to give you this warning unsigned content. Just hit OK. This makes Eclipse trust the Google plugin. And it'll tell you to restart Eclipse. So I'll hit yes and Eclipse will open up okay so now that Eclipse is open and we can work with um, Android the first thing we need to do is go into preferences okay then you'll go to the Android tab let me zoom in here
and then it'll come up and say that your Android SDK has not been set up yet. So I'll hit OK. And it will want to, let's see, it'll want to find the SDK. Alright, so you just click on Android, and it says, you know, value for the uh, directory must exist. So just hit browse. Let me zoom out real quick. Okay, now I saved mine on the desktop under Android apps, and right here it is. So I'll hit, I'll go to my folder, and I'll open it and hit OK. Then hit Apply, and hit OK. Now when you zoom out, Eclipse is now trained to find the SDK at that location. So it's very important not to move that or you'll get errors in the future. Next I'll go to Window, Android SDK, and you'll see I've already created new virtual machines for Android, but I'll go ahead and create another one for y'all. So I'll just hit New. Actually first, I'll go to Installed Packages and hit Update All to see if there's any updates, and they would appear here if there are, and there's not available packages I'll do the same thing, and it'll just give you this, and there's nothing to install. So back to virtual devices, let me zoom in, I'll go to new, and this one, you can name it whatever you want, but this one I'm going to want to be dealing with 2.2, so I'll just name it 2.2. The target, Android 2.2, and for size, I'm going to do 16 meg. Um, size is what you can put on the SD card of the actual phone itself and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to leave default hardware. I'm going to leave default and I'm going to click create. And you'll see Android 2.2 is now right there. And you can delete um, any virtual device that you want to. You can create new ones anytime you want. Um, you can repair them. You can do create as many of these as you want. So I'm going to exit out of these now that I have my virtual machines. And the virtual machine is just simply what your app runs in. If you're testing, for example, if you're building for a newer 2.2 phone, then you'd want to target 2.2. If you'd want to build for something that runs 2.1, you'd target that. You can make it for as many targets as you want. It's just recommended to test every single one of those so you know that it works right. So to create our new project, I'm going to go to File, New, and you'll notice Android is nowhere in here. So you go to Other, and Android, Android Project, hit Next and it's just going to want a name so I'm just going to name it test and let's target this against 2.2 application name test package name com.tck.test and this will be unique to your company name um, create activity main main SDK version is 8 so I'm just going to hit finish and it will go ahead and load my new project for me and here it is now you can see that in the code in the hierarchy as you go down you'll see the java code right here and here is it tells you if there's any errors, um, anything like that. For some reason, Galileo has an issue every time you create a new project. Um, sometimes it can't find that SDK that you specify. Uh, the solution for me was always to turn it off or restart the program, and it would always make these errors go away. 
but the, I'm running out of time now, so I'll be making more Android tutorials in the future, and we'll take off right where we left off right here. So if you guys like my videos, please subscribe, and thanks for watching.